My first computer was the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and given that the man behind the machine, Sir Clive Sinclair, passed away last month, I was getting kind of nostalgic for some specky action. I have one of those not so shiny new ZX Spectrum Next machines, but those are really difficult to get hold of and issue 2 is coming soon. What do you do if you don't have the original hardware or a ZX Spectrum Next? How do you get your ZX Spectrum fix? This is where ZX Bear Emulator comes in. This is a step-by-step -step guide for getting you up and running with an old Raspberry Pi and playing specky games in no time. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a Raspberry Pi. I have an ancient one lying around, but it works pretty well with everything except for the Raspberry Pi 4. You'll need an SD card and an SD card reader to get the Raspberry Pi to boot up as a Spectrum. You'll also need a USB keyboard to get you started, but for that super specky nerd fest, you'll, you can also add a recreated ZX Spectrum because it's fully supported out of the box. Once you have everything, let's download the Raspberry Pi imager and install it. Open up raspberrypi.org in your favorite browser and go to the software section. Scroll down and download the appropriate version for your machine. Click the setup file and run it and follow the prompts. At the end, run Raspberry Pi Imager and let's get started. Insert your SD card into the card reader and the card reader into the PC. Select the card from the storage drop down. Next, you'll want to select the light version of Raspbian because we're not going to be booting into it anyway. It's just going to be used to prepare the SD card for the Raspberry Pi so we can boot it. We're going to replace some of the boot files too in the next step. Choose Raspberry Pi Other and Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit Click on the right button to write the image in the SD card and let it verify. At this point, you'll need to reinsert the card because it was ejected by the imager. Uh, cancel any format dialogues that appear and then just click OK for this dialog here. Uh, you should now see the boot disk and we're going to copy some files into this location next. Create a folder called ROMs. This is where our tap files are going to exist. I haven't had much success with other formats so your mileage may vary with those. Uh, you'll need to source your own specky tab files. I, tap files. I can't tell you where to find them but just copy them over to the ROM folder as I did here. Okay, let's get the emulator. Uh, it's going to be a bunch of files that we overwrite some files in the boot disk. So back to our favorite browser and go to zxmini.specky.org slash en slash index.html. Uh, that link is in the notes below. Scroll down to the files list and download the all files zip folder. Show this file in Explorer and then extract its content. Open up your other window with the boot disk folder and copy the files in all files over to it. Overwrite any files when prompted. And that's it. Now all we need to do is eject the SD card and insert it into the Pi. And here's the first boot. It's super quick and we're right at the copyright message. It defaults to being in 48k mode, but we're going to change that and I'll show you later. I'm using a straight USB keyboard for this first boot. And if I press the F1 key, it brings up the bare emulator menu. On a USB keyboard, use the arrow keys to move up and down and space to select. This is how we choose what tap files we want to load. Pressing A to Z will jump to that letter in the list. And you open a folder by selecting it and tapping space. So if we jump to the, um, the ROMs folder and we open it, we'll see all our .tap files that we have inside here. Tapping space over Jetpack selects it and pressing the F1 key returns us to the ZX Spectrum where we can load it and start playing the game. It uses a fast loader so you don't have to wait around for a long time waiting for things to load. 
So now that we have it selected, we can type in load and then double quotes, as long as I get it right. And you should you see the, the border starting to flash and then Jetpack loads and it should show the, um, the loading screen. I'll just speed this up a bit. You've probably noticed that there's no sound and that's because it only comes through the three and a half mil jack on the Raspberry Pi. I can assure you 100% works though. Sounds great as beeps and boops and the ZX Spectrum can sound. I haven't tried any 128K programs yet, so I don't know how good the AY sound chip sounds, but anyway, comment below if you have. Pressing control break resets the ZX Spectrum. And if you press alt and F4, that's going to reset it to 128K mode. And if you press Alt and F4, that's going to reset it to plus 2A mode. Using the recreated ZX Spectrum from Elite Systems, you can connect the unit to the Raspberry Pi using the USB Mini to USB-A. Make sure that the layer switch is set to A. Turn off the power of the keyboard as well, you're not going to need it. Once connected, the emulator detects it and you can use it straight away. Obviously, you don't have function keys, so you're going to need to enter extended mode. The way you do this is you press the caps and symbol shift key and enter key at the same time. Now, the number keys act like the function keys. So you can enter and exit this, this mode uh, and then press the number keys to access that particular function. So if you want to reset the ZX Spectrum to 128K mode, you would enter this extended mode and then press 3. In the menus, use Q and A to move up and down through the items. Space still selects. And that's pretty much it. If you need help, you can press Alt plus K at any time. That'll bring up a help menu uh, and it's got a Spectrum keyboard there and it'll show you other shortcut keys available to you. Um, and I hope you have fun playing with your ZX Spectrum. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, and I hope you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, please let me know in the comments below. If you got this far and liked what you see, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell though. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye bye.